Hello everyone. Thank you and welcome again to my YouTube channel. My name is Olu Adedi. And in today's video, I'll be talking about the background section of a research proposal. Uh, you remember that in my previous videos, I did mention about what a research proposal entails. Uh, I also took time to elaborate on the whole idea of a research proposal, uh, concerning the fact that it's an academic blueprint uh, that gives a step-by-step -step procedure of your research intentions. And um, I also took time to highlight the components of a research proposal. I'm talking about the components. I listed uh, almost all of the things you will find in a research proposal. And so in today's video, I will be talking about the background information section of a research proposal. Remember to subscribe to this channel, uh, follow me on my Twitter handle uh, for research engagement and uh, content that will help, help you to understand your research uh, pursuits. Okay, so let's get into the real business of today. Now, when you think of the background information section of your research proposal, I'm not sure what comes to your mind, but here is it. The background information is actually an opportunity for you to present the research gap for you to give contextualized information around the research problem that informed your decision to go with that topic. So think of it again this way, that the background information is more like you saying you prefer scrambled egg to poached egg or to boiled egg. There must have been a reason for that. Or even if you are a meaty person uh, like me, you want probably to you prefer your meats, uh, rare medium, um, well done, or you know, very well done. So all of this kind of um, idea, illustration, is just to give you a better understanding of what the research proposal in, in terms of the background information section entail. So the background information section is such that you have the ability or you must be able to demonstrate clearly that you have engaged with literature. You must be able to give us context to what literature is saying and context around, most importantly, your topic because your topic will be the sole purpose that informs the direction of your background information. So again, what does that mean? The background information section also gives you an opportunity to pick your spot. But picking your spot does not mean that you can write anything and everything, even in that spot that you have picked. Remember again, if we raise our mind back to research topic, where I took time to mention the fact that there must be a central issue that informed your research topic. <clears throat> the same thing plays out in the background information section. So the background information section allows you, number one, to pick your spot, but more importantly, you're picking the spot not just for everything and anything, but you're picking the spot around your research area of interest. And picking the spot also gives you a further edge to be able to contextualize the information. So you are contextualizing the information. In what way? You're contextualizing it on a global scale. You're contextualizing it on a regional or sub-regional scale. You're contextualizing it on a national scale. And you're contextualizing it on a local scale. So you are giving us a layer by layer information on how the problem is seen around the world, how the problem is seen regionally or uh, sub-regionally and how the problem is seen nationally and how the problem exists locally. So the background information is such that allows you to come up with statistics, evidence-based information in the form of references. So you have a lot to prove in your background information section. It is more like you're giving a false impression. And the false impression must also clearly align with your research topic. Okay, so let me give you this interesting analogy. The background information is more like someone asking you, oh, okay, tell us about yourself. Hmm. Telling us about yourself is actually an opportunity for, for you to say everything and anything. But no, 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 it doesn't happen that way. What you're going to say about yourself, how you're going to propagate the information about yourself, the extent with which you want to go, in other words, the detail that you want to go about yourself, 
we will be informed by several factors. For instance, the person asking you the question, the environment with which the question was asked, the context with which the question was asked. And these are some of the things you have to put in mind when you're developing the background information section of your research proposal. Again, why is the background information section very important? It is important because that is your first entry point as far as your research is concerned. It is an opportunity for you to clearly demonstrate that you understand your topic and you know exactly all of the problems that are associated with the topic. Okay, so colleagues, why is it so important again for you to have your background information section? It is important because you want to show that literature does exist in that research area or literature has proven what has already been done, the extent with which it has been done, what is still left unattended to. In other words, why your research is fitting into one of those limitations. So the background information section is such that gives you a robust opportunity for you to come up with narrative that will give support, that will give validity to your research topic. Now, the context can vary. The context can be in form of historical, it could be in form of political, it could be in form of key events that are taking place. It, it can take any shape, but whatever shape it takes, always remember that your research topic is what will filter down into the components of your background information section. And you can structure it such that you have Paragraphs by paragraphs. For instance, you can dedicate a paragraph for the global problem. You can dedicate another paragraph for the regional or sub-regional problem. You can dedicate another paragraph for the national problem and another paragraph for the local problem around your research topic. So one of the dangers of background information is that if you're not careful, if there is no clearly defined thought and critical thinking that has gone into it, you can completely write everything that is in the opposite of your research topic. So always remember that everything you do in your background information section must be informed first and foremost by your research topic. And if you're not sure what this entails, Again, for the sake of emphasis, I want to say that the central issue around your research topic will inform the structure, the outline of your background information. So having said this, think of your background information as your entry point. Think of your background information as an opportunity for you to give an impression that you are in charge of the project or the research area that you have managed to identify. Think of your background information as an opportunity for you to present a globally contextualized, regionally contextualized, locally contextualized problem around your research topic. And it's also an opportunity for you to show that this problem does exist, but there are fractions of the problem that have also been identified. Hence, your topic is coming in as a research gap to fill in that purpose. Um, Again, I'm more than happy to welcome your questions, your queries. Uh, please follow me on my Twitter handle, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I promise to bring you content that will help you understand research in the simplest way possible. And I promise to give you simple analogy to explain the component or the content of research uh, to the best of my ability. I'll see you in other subsequent video. Thank you very much and see you soon.